Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm visiting my German artist friend Martin Weimar again. Two months ago, I visited him at his studio and made an interview. He told me that there was another artist living next to him. And this time, I wanted to say hi, but unfortunately, his neighbor seemed to have left China. This is the studio of another artist. This one is yeah. American Chinese, but uh, unfortunately, he disappeared. Oh. Talking about leaving, I have some news. I'm leaving for Europe in three weeks to commence my study. I won't be able to make more videos like this after leaving China, so I thought it would be a good idea to make another video with Martin while I still have the chance. We talked about renting artist studio, working with galleries, visiting museums, the future of mankind, and afterlife. Well, this is the kind of small talks we normally have. For this video, I tested my $30 wireless mic I just bought. What do you think? Is it good enough? Let me know in the comment below. How long does it take me? Yeah, I, I don't know. I do every day a couple of hours. and. If it's fast, the real painting process is maybe 10 days. It's a bit depends on the size. Today I use Winsor and Newton. It's a English name, but these things all produced in China. It's a hand which have some cream, foam. You see this uh, three, four paintings. They are uh, painting about painting in the painting. They have a cream passed in the face or a cosmetic uh, ma material. This girl lady has this hands full of cream. It's a box in the box. You paint very figurative, but you paint a concept of painting. So I have this different lines and one is this line we use a uh, figurative painting style or tool for speak about painting on a different way. I think two years they will demolish. This will be gone. And I think if they do opposite they do new villas, then they want free mm -hmm. because behind is the lake yeah. and they want the lakeside. A lakeside. Actually, in Germany, the real estate market is much more socialist than the Chinese. Chinese is uh, super capitalistic. Like America? Like America, yeah, probably. Yeah. And uh, the rights of tenants in Germany are very solid. You cannot kick somebody out easily. And you cannot rise up the rents too much, too fast. And now, they think about the new government of Germany probably think about to froze in the real estate price. It's not good because uh, the problem is the landlords in the moment they cannot make profits. They don't care about the buildings anymore. So they become bloody and it looks like uh, in the East Germany time very fast. So as a landlord you, you think what you invest to save tax facade, new stairs, no post box, to better heating, better windows, and all these things you stop immediately. So it's a, it's a thing to bring it in a, in a balance. I personally think to move sometimes is a good thing. You know, we have in Europe, in, in Germany, we have a lot of these government studios. You get for cheaper rent a studio like a box yeah like a box do you know when you leave it if you are horizontal they take you out that means you you stick at the situation lifelong that's very bad in my opinion if i rent some space i don't invest so much money the chinese people they really go there and they invest really like 200,000 or something it's no problem for them make it nicey and clean and pantry kitchen and tea corner and <laughs> but I invest in this space not so much actually nothing yeah the air condition but come on that's all 
in China and uh, Europe is very different. The galleries in uh, Europe, and especially in Germany, are working uh, almost 20 years. So it's kind of friendship. It's a long-term relation, and it builds up the career of the artist step by step. So improves the price, of course. It's a business. Gallery artists, art history, like museums, curators. So this is the triangle make the artist better. But in China, you don't have it. You don't have the culture of this independent uh, science of art history and uh, museums. You have a lot of hardware. They call each other museums, but they are not. They are actually art halls, exhibition centers, but they are not museums. So you, so long you also can pay in, you buy in this museum. So it's not the things about the ranking of a scientist research. The gallery just can improve the price by feeling markets or by auction. So and so it's rise up. But this is uh, a thing which is inside of China. Okay, so the rich, this expensive artists are actually so expensive the Chinese market pay them. But international, international wise, they have another price level. So they even the auction house of the biggest uh, Sotheby's or Christie's, they have different uh, departments. If you have Asia or China or you have international, most of the galleries cannot develop an artist at all. Maybe in Beijing, Long March did for sure two, three others, but very tiny, it's very small. You make exhibition and you probably can sell something in the moment where the exhibition is over, nothing happens. It's not that they don't like, it's like they don't know how. And the structure, the network is not here. So if you can imagine China have in every bigger city a museum or some exhibition centers and it would be really researched and by curators on a level, not paid one. You know, curators also paid by the artist, paid by character to write. And this is a, a capitalistic structure. It's interesting that the socialist structure for the art would be in some cases not so bad. For example, limit the uh, auction results. They're crazy. So tax it down and also gives the structure of the relationship between the museum's uh, uh, artist and the um, science. Yeah. And, of course, to the audience. The, the, the main thing is, of course, if you don't have the audience... You know, I was just in the Red Brick Museum. It's quite nice. It's an abstraction Belgian painter and a very, very famous British one. And you see 80% of the visitors still going in this selfie culture. We make selfie in front of the thing. A Chinese friend of me, she came in and we wondering there was a, like, don't smoke, wear mask, and don't change clothes yes. sign. <laughs> she didn't understand, and I said, you know, sometimes they use this as a model yeah. background. <laughs> and just 20 meters first model with photographer in the museum's areas. So, and then there was a, a guide from the museum. He have a group to explain the abstraction art of a Belgian painter. So yeah, he explained it very simple. You see the color, you see the stroke, you see the idea of this painting. So that's, that's like, you know, don't go to the point where the power from the abstraction have been in the middle of the last century, where many people forget that the Americans, they support the abstraction art, which is origin from uh, Europe, come by the immigrants to America, and was blow up. And the beginning was against the Nazi German situation in the uh, 30s, 40s. This is a sign of the abstraction art, it's like the Western, it's called freedom, right? And uh, Jackson Pollock was this kind of hero, so like this James Dean. A painting like that becomes so blind, you put it to Beijing in a museum, and you, you can explain the Chinese people by color, stroke, idea, what's going on with this painting, but it don't make this original click. And maybe some Chinese have this um, education by Chinese ink, or Chinese whatever, so they, uh, they know 
uh, harmony, brush stroke, uh, something that maybe the abstraction can be somehow perfectly misunderstood. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a little bit like we do <laughs> this, something like this. It's very hard to educate that things because in the end it comes from the deepness of, you know, really from the roots of the society. I don't want to say Chinese society or culture is without that roots. This culture has artists all the 5,000 years. But currently, this organization of society, it's, it's not on the focus, it's not on the ranking. I feel uh, the art thing is something, okay, we let tolerance to let people do. But it's not, it's not the main point of, of the cultural development of Beijing or of the city. Yeah, I believe in the free market, but the art market is a special one. This is a market where knowledge and feeling is very, very important. And it always works if you have the B-side uh, uh, things of the museums, of the curators, of the science, art history. In the end, it is settled in a general improvement of a society. So I don't believe in a society which going in a, this direction have, on the other hand, artists. I don't, I don't believe that. The idea of the current situation is not no need artists. It's not, Dominic, understand me, it's not critics about that. It's just, uh, uh, it's a, just a fact, you know. Because you have space, you have the artist, you have the talents, you have very big art schools, you have the culture. I think even you have the families who support the daughters and sons to go there. That's not the point, that's not the problem. And in the end, it's a liberal um, uh, creation of a society, civil society. You can organize the art by art schools, you have these teachers, and the students, and you organize the discuss, discussion between them, and you bring them organized in a group shows or sometimes solo shows. You have museums, so you say, okay, this year is the 100 best of, like power shows. And then the teacher has 60 years birthday, and then they get a show. And the teacher has 80 years birthday, and then they get a show. That's, that's fine, that's, that's how it works. So it's and, and so you can go there and visit and so that's if I have an exhibition in a small city of Germany, every artist is very nervous after the opening because two days later the newspaper article about the show comes. I have thanks God was okay, but sometimes the journalist this is a part of the circus of the scene. He writes, it's pretty terrible. It's kitsch. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's, what is this guy doing? He didn't like it. He, di he criticized my over motivated uh, stroke in that time and say it's boring and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, many others can don't sleep for, for weeks yeah, after critics. Destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, but means they get destroyed. That's a chance to grow. Even you you say after a while it was bullshit, then it doesn't matter. Or I think maybe this point or others have the right. I need to tell you something else. In these days, I r remember uh, a German discussion I had as a young artist. There was a philosopher, Adorno, Frankfurt School, and he say. After Auschwitz, poem, writing, lyrics, uh, barbarism. It was a big discussion and it was two replies. One say yes and one say no. What happens as crime shouldn't be in power to the people forever make impossible the art. Why I tell you, it's like, boom. Be honest, every country, every culture situation, every 
um, historical moment have something similar where you can't be without position. And I think the problem now around the world, we can't be without position. That's something you would ask me five years ago, eight years ago, I say, well, it doesn't matter, we are so multi, multipolar uh, build it that, but this changed. This is a time change we just have now. That's a, a very interesting moment. I think the history is coming in waves, and uh, as a German, we had a very calm, relaxed time, but now it's over. So, th and if this happens, then influence politics, but also philosophy, but also the art. Because we had, after that, we had this thing with, the peak was the modern, and then we tried to survive with postmodern and coming back to this contemporary, which was, in the end, uh, a surface of lifestyle, right? Of research here and there and bring combinations of this global order. So that was the interesting point of that. It's not everything bad about that. But now this will be uh, for sure different. And you see this uh, auction result, 59 million US dollar, by this uh, uh, Beagle, by this uh, internet thing. Like it or don't like it, but this is a, it's a message, it's very clear. At first we have the dematerialisierung, dematerialise of the art, go consequently the step which is here, and you don't need that, <laughs> you don't need the canvas. It makes automatically very different because you can immediately exchange the art completely global. You can immediately change from your system I brain from one place to another. In the other hand, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, you n never forget art is something the authority like to push down. As society, we lost the idea how danger can be art, you know. And it is, it's, it, it, for moments, uh, it is very, very uh, powerful. And it, um, uh, my artwork is a little bit difficult for that because the paintings uh, like to be watched face by face. Now the corona, uh, like Art Basel and all this, they have online uh, affairs, but it don't work so well like you can put it in, in real to a booth in a hall in a city. But on the other hand, I see, I don't sell so much in a, uh, online, but I have some paintings, they're going viral around the world. Three, four paintings, and I don't know why it's so attracted to people. I, it's surprising. It's not depends on one artist to do, do, to do or don't do with that. Uh, this is a uh, process of a collective. And uh, I think we should think about how we win our energy, our power. That's a very important question now. It will take 100 years to clean up the planet and many, many, many people will die. I'm not a pessimistic person at all, but I think this, uh, this century will be harder. I could imagine, I saw some videos from uh, gallerists, which I met in Beijing. They are now in India. And I see what's going on in India now is very similar than what we had in China 15 years ago. Especially the art thing. So this uh, open thing, open up and build up, that's impressive. Yeah, if I would be f uh, younger or in more independent, not aged, but uh, yeah, of course. Of course, I would go somewhere else. There will be also places in Europe, maybe in Spain. I'm not sure, I don't know. Spain is cheap and Spain is hot. The Germans care about where it's hot. Yeah, that's true. After Berlin rain. How old are you? Now? Mm, yes. <laughs> Last year? 54. Slowly I think I become scared. <laughs> But I came to China with 42. Where would you go after you die? 
I have seen in the country, I thought if I die, I should go where? It's Japan. I think Japan is the country for dead people. You mean old people? No, if you die. If you died already. Why would you go to Japan if you die? Because I never saw a country where landscape and spiritual and maybe the people so perfect match about each other. That's because you're German. Probably, yeah. Maybe some parts of China are same. You have been in Japan? No. You should. Yeah, my next life is probably cat food. <laughs> we went to a reservation-only restaurant after for lunch in Caochangdi area. It's a very nice hidden little place with decent coffee, art, and three cats. What more could I ask? Hello. Hello, girl. This Caochangdi area is undergoing many changes. It might not be here anymore when I come back. It feels like history in the making. Oh, they're alive! It's real! It's not locked. Isn't it dangerous? Can we lock it? See you soon! Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.